Hello and welcome to the chapter on Computer System Overview. This is the part 3 of this particular chapter and today we are going to discuss about software and its types. Let's see the contents of this video. Here we will be basically starting off with the definition of software meaning what is a software. Then we will basically be seeing about the different types of softwares which are system software within which we will be studying about operating system we'll be studying about different types of language processors like compiler, interpreter, and assembler. Then we'll be studying about device drivers, and then we'll be studying about application software within which there are packages, customized softwares, system utilities, and developer tools. So these are the topics that we'll be covering in this video. So let's get started with the definition of software. So what is a software? Let's say we purchase a computer, a very expensive computer from the market, but there is no software installed in the computer. Will we be able to use that machine? No, we won't be able to use that machine. That machine will literally be of no use to us. So what we have to do? We have to like throw it in the garbage bin. So how to make use of the computer? For making use of the computer, we require something known as the software, which brings us to the initial question as to what is a software. So what a software is? It is a set of programs that govern the operation of a computer system and make the hardware run. What it is? It is a set of programs. So in a software, we'll be having a number of programs which will help in making the hardware of the computer run okay so software is a set of programs which will help you in running the program and running the computer there are different types of softwares available which are basically softwares can be classified into two categories they are system software and application software system software can further be classified into three categories which are operating system language processors and device drivers and application softwares are classified into four categories which are packages, system utilities, customized softwares and developer tools. Let's start with system software. So we know that a computer is a mere machine that knows nothing of itself. Each and every instruction should be given to the computer. These instructions are provided with the help of what? These instructions are provided with the help of software. So system software is such a software that controls the internal operations of a computer. So the definition says that the software that controls the internal operations of a computer is called system software. Internal operation means it will basically interact with the hardware so that you can run all other programs and all other application softwares over it. Okay, so what are the different types of system softwares we'll be seeing now? So what are the different tasks that a system software does? The first task is it reads data from the input devices. So Whenever we are interacting with the computer, we are giving some data via the input devices. Input devices means the devices like keyboard, mouse, etc. So reading data from the input devices is one of the major tasks of system software. Another task of system software is to transmit the processed information to the output device. Output devices examples are, it may be monitor. So after the uh, after we give the input, the input will be processed and after that the result will be shown via the output device. So this process of transmitting the processed information is also done with the help of system software. Third use is checking system components. System software ensures that all the components attached to a computer system are working properly or not. So let, let's say we switch on the computer and after that there is some problem with the keyboard. Now the system software will check all the components and if there is any component missing it will give you some kind of message so that you can rectify your mistake. Okay. Next is it helps in translating the instructions. All of us know that computer understands only 0 and 1 that means the machine language. So system software will help 
in translating from high level language means english language to the machine language so translating instructions is also one of the most important tasks of system software let's see these tasks by in details so let's see the different types of system softwares which are operating system language processors and device drivers let's start our discussion with the concept of operating system so what is an operating system let's say we buy a computer the computer is nothing but a piece of hardware you cannot use the hardware without a software that we have already learned a few minutes back so as a user you will be thinking how do i use this computer now for using this computer you require something known as operating system so and once the operating system is installed the user can use the computer so how does a operating system help in utilizing the hardware the operating system helps in uh, helps the user in interacting with the hardware so what can we say an operating system acts as an interface between the user of a computer and the computer hardware so the formal definition of an operating system may be like as follows it is a system software which acts as an interface between a an user and the hardware so it acts as an intermediary so that you can interact with the computer system some examples of operating systems are most popular example of operating system is windows operating system it's developed by microsoft next is mac operating system it's developed by apple and next one of the most popular open source operating system is ubuntu okay next let's see the different functions of operating system how does an operating system help so that we can uh, use the computer system smoothly it helps in the following ways the first function of an operating system is an operating system makes the computer system convenient to use so if you have a operating system you can use the computer system conveniently next operating system helps in using the hardware in an efficient manner so let's say you purchase a very very expensive computer which has intel core i7 like 16 gigabyte of ram 1 terabyte of hard disk or maybe solid state drive but if the operating system is not good then you cannot use the hardware in an efficient manner so one task of operating system is to help in using the hardware in an efficient manner next function of operating system is it provides an environment such that all the softwares can run properly so at first we install the operating system or it may be pre installed from the uh, manufacturer also but all the softwares that we want like ms word like photoshop etc now how these softwares will run these softwares will run over and above the operating system so operating system provides an environment such that all the softwares can run properly next function of operating system is it helps in managing the resources scheduling and also plays a major role in memory management so resources means if we can connect various things to the computer like printer joystick and different medical equipments also so how these resources are managed these resources are managed with the help of operating system itself next is scheduling scheduling means at a time many tasks may be given to the operating system so which task will be performed first which task will be performed second which task will be performed third all these things are also managed with the help of operating system so these are the different functions of operating systems let's see the interface of different operating system so this is the interface of windows 7 so this is the interface of windows like typically windows 7 has this type of interface interface means this is the look and feel of the operating system if i talk about mac operating system this is the interface of mac operating system is developed by apple if i talk about the interface of ubuntu this is how an ubuntu interface looks like 
let's go to the next type of system software which is language processor see we know that a computer understands only two digits those are 0 and 1 it is known as the machine language but it is very difficult to learn and understand machine language for humans therefore this but we give the instructions in high level language do we give the instructions to a computer nowadays using zeros and ones no we give it in high level language typically in the english language but can a computer understand english language no a computer cannot understand english language or any other language for that matter therefore these high level languages using which we interact with the computer needs to be converted into machine language now how this conversion from high level language to machine language is done this conversion from high level language to machine language is done with the help of what we say as language processors okay so what is language processor it is a category of system software that converts a source code to machine language source code means whatever we give to the computer from outside it is known as the source code in high level language so the programs written by a programmer in high level language is called source code let's say we are using the python programming language so whatever programs we are writing in python it is known as the source code but a computer does not understand source code it understands what is known as the machine language or in programming terms we say it to be object code so what is object code the code converted to machine language by the language processor is called object code so we know that language processor helps in converting the source code to object code what is object code after conversion whatever code we get it is known as the object code as an example we can say that let's say we write print hello it is known as the source code because we are writing it with the help of the keyboard now it is converted by language processor into let's say somewhat like this it is known as the object code after conversion whatever code we get it is known as the object code now language processors they can be classified into three types interpreter compiler and assembler let's see all these three types of language processors one after another let's start with interpreter so what is an interpreter for understanding it let's take an example let's say we have a person his name is ram we have another person his name is sham ram understands english and sham understands only tamil ram understands only english and sham understands only tamil now can the communication happen between these two people no communication cannot happen between these two people therefore we require a third person let's say that third person understands both english and tamil let's name that person as interpreter now if the communication is to take place between sham and ram how the communication will take place with the help of an interpreter let us try to understand let's say sham says something in tamil what the interpreter will do interpreter will convert it into english okay then sham will again say the second line what the interpreter will do interpreter will translate it so that ram can understand into uh, english now one thing to note here is that how the translation is happening translation is happening line by line who is helping in translating the interpreter is helping in translation so what is interpreter it is a language processor that translates source code written in high level language to machine language line by line so it is such a language processor which translates the source code written in high level language to machine like language how the conversion is done the conversion is done line by line these three words are very important in case of interpreter here the translation happens line by line don't forget this next let us try to understand about the second type of language processor which is a compiler let's take the same example we have one person named ram and we have sham ram understands only english and sham understands only tamil now communication cannot happen between these two people because one does not understand others language therefore a third person is required who understands both english and tamil 
Now let's change the name of the third person. Now let's call him a compiler. Now how the translation will happen? How the compiler will help in translating the uh, sentences of Sham to Ram? Let's see here. Now here what will happen? Sham will say everything that he has to say at once. And after Sham has completed his speech, the compiler will translate everything at once. Okay, this is the difference between compiler and interpreter. So what is a compiler? It is a language processor that translates source code written in high level language to machine language in one go. In case of compiler, at first, uh, the compiler will not play any role. At first, what will happen? You will write the instructions in high level language and when you are done with writing everything at the end everything will be translated that's how a compiler works now before going to the next type of language processor let's try to understand the generation of computer language in very brief at the first we had first generation language first generation language understood only machine language that means language which used only zeros and ones then we had second generation language which is assembly language but always keep this in mind that no matter how many generation languages come computer can understand only the machine language that is the first generation language Third generation language consists of the high level languages, the languages which we use most often like Python, C, C++, Java, etc. Next is fourth generation language which consists of SQL, Oracle, etc. Basically these are the database management systems. Next we have fifth generation languages like Prolog, OPS5, Mercury, etc. Fifth generation languages are basically used for artificial intelligence. Now, uh, sixth generation language is also being developed which is known as no code language here in case of sixth generation language without using any code only you can develop various programs so that's about the generation of computer languages in brief now let us talk about assembler what is an assembler it is a language processor that translates a program written in assembly language to machine language. We are, know that computer understands only one type of language known as machine language. So an assembler translates a program which is written in assembly language into a machine language. So these are some of the words that are used in assembly language but computer cannot understand assembly language. So an assembler helps in converting these into what? Into a machine language. I hope you are clear with the three types of language processor. Let's go to the next topic within system software which is the device drivers. Let's try to understand what is a device driver. So it is a special kind of software program that controls a specific hardware device attached to a computer. So let's say I purchase a printer for my tasks. Okay. And I already have the computer. Now what I have purchased recently, I purchased a printer. But my computer will not be able to recognize this printer. Now for my computer to be able to recognize the new printer that I have bought, I need a special kind of software which is known as the device driver. So it is a special kind of software program that controls a specific hardware device attached to a computer. Another example can be, let's say you purchase a new pen drive from the market and attach it into your USB uh, drive. Once you attach it, for the first time, it will give you some instructions like installing device drivers. So device drivers are special kinds of software which is required so that we can run a specific type of hardware. For different, different types of hardware, the device drivers is different. Typically, whenever you purchase a new device that device manufacturer gives you the device drivers okay so that you don't face any uh, problem while uh, using it in your already uh, in the computer which you already have now we are done with system software let's try to understand application software okay so let's get started with application software so we use different types of applications in our day-to-day -day life 
for example ms word it is used for typing letters and different other documentation purposes let's say you have to make a project for making the project for uh, making the document of the project you will be using ms word or any other word processing software if you have to edit some photos you will be using photoshop if you have to make a presentation then you will be using powerpoint or any other presentation software so what are these typing a letter editing photos or making a presentation these are some specific jobs okay so what is an application software an application software is the set of programs necessary to carry out operations for a specific purpose if we require a software for a specific purpose then that is known as application software all right application softwares can be classified into different types like packages customized softwares system utilities and developer tools let's start our discussion with the help of packages so for understanding packages let's take an example let's say we have a school now for different activities of the school different types of softwares are required for example ms word is required for typing something ms excel is required for making the salary or some data analysis powerpoint is required for making presentations these are some of the requirements of school onedrive is required for storing your data in the cloud microsoft teams is required for conducting online classes or for online meetings with the staff so and one note is required for making taking the notes now all these things can be bundled together into what we know as or what we call as package now in this case the package is ms office so what is a package it is a set of related general application softwares here in this case the package name is ms office ms office is not a software it is a package within which we will have a set of related software if we uh, use ms office online it's known as microsoft 365 as of today so let's go to the formal definition of packages packages are a collection of related general application softwares for example if i purchase the microsoft office package i'll be getting these softwares similarly there is a package from adobe also if i purchase the package of adobe i will be getting photoshop lightroom premiere pro and all these things okay next let's go to customized software customized means if someone make something only for you or only for a small group of people it's known as customization here let's take an example here let's say we have a school called abc public school and we have another school called def public school now different schools the schools they require something known as school management system it is a software which is required by different schools now the working procedure of abc public school and the working procedure of def public school will it be same many things will be same but many things will be different also therefore the school management system built for abc public school will not be effective for def public school therefore uh, customized softwares are required similarly banks require a type of software known as banking management system here i have taken two bank uh, as an example one is state bank of india other is the axis bank now the software developed for state bank of india cannot be used by axis bank and the software developed for axis bank cannot be used by state bank of india why because their working procedures will be different therefore customization is required so what is a customized software the type of softwares that are designed according to the requirement of a particular business or organization is called customized software now if a particular software is developed according to the requirement of a particular business organization then it is known as customized software now you may ask me 
uh, so whether MS Word is a customized software or not? No, MS Word is not a customized software. It is a general application software because anyone can use that software and can take the benefits of word processing. Okay. Next, let's go to system utilities. What are system utilities? These are the application softwares that assist the computer by performing the housekeeping functions. Housekeeping functions mean it will do the general maintenance activity of a computer like disk backup, scanning the computer system, cleaning the viruses with the help of various antivirus softwares like Norton and Quickhill and various other uh, antivirus softwares are also there and arranging information uh, properly. These are housekeeping functions. Now who will help in managing these housekeeping functions of a computer? System utilities will help in managing the housekeeping functions of a computer. Next, let's go to developer tools. What are developer tools? Let us see. These are the softwares used by programmers to create, test and debug a software. Let's say I have to create a program. Now for creating a program, I will require various tools. Like if I am uh, creating a program with the help of Python, I'll be requiring ideally. If I'm creating with the help of Java, I'll be requiring NetBeans. If I'm doing some kind of web programming, I, I may require Sublime editors. What are these? These are developer tools. Means these are softwares that are used by programmers to create program, to test a program, and to debug a software. What is the meaning of debugging? Debugging means when you develop a program, often uh, various types of errors will come. Now, what you as a developer will have to correct those errors. Correction of error is known as debugging. These developer tools has the facility of creating the programs, testing the programs and also debugging the software in case of any errors. Okay. Now, at the end, I'd like to show you the working hierarchy in a computer. Now, at the extreme uh, internal, we have the hardware. Means as I purchase the computer, what I'm purchasing, I'm purchasing the hardware. Hardware consists of the, par the parts which we can feel and touch like CPU, keyboard, mouse, printer, etc. But we cannot run the hardware individually. For running the hardware, we require something known as system software this is just like a revision and system software consists of operating system language processors device drivers and utilities as we have seen in this per in this video itself now within above the system software we install this application software application software means software is for specific purpose like word processors like ms word spreadsheets like ms excels photo editors like uh, Adobe Photoshop, some kind of graphic design software, some kind of presentation software like PowerPoint or some kind of database management system like SQL. So all these application softwares run over system softwares and system softwares will work over the hardware. This is the entire working hierarchy in a software. Okay. I hope that this session was useful. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a different session. Thank you very much.